This is the story of a video game called The Stanley Parable. The Stanley Parable is an odd one in that it loves to lay itself bare in front of you. Whereas most games try to keep their design and mechanics a bit of a secret, but don't tend to pull it off all that well, The Stanley Parable does the exact opposite. It's perfectly willing to tell you all of its secrets and completely demystify itself, but at the same time it feels so secretive, to the point where some are still combing it for secrets to this day to little avail. What other game as mysterious as The Stanley Parable would have something like the museum ending? The game quite literally shows the player its blueprints and what is one of the first endings most people will encounter. And what's more, if you look at those blueprints closely, you can find the path to one of the most well-hidden and interesting endings clearly labeled, begging you to try it out. The confusion ending. This is where my understanding of the game begins and ends. It's the perfect opening statement to this game and the perfect closer. Because of that, and for the purposes of brevity, we'll mainly focus on that ending today. So what happens in the confusion ending? Well, first off, we get the quote-unquote true ending to the game spoiled for us, and the narrator quickly restarts. No! No! No, 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 this isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. With this, we go to the first fork in the path, and find that it's filled with choices beyond the intended two. For a game so full of choices, you'd think the narrator would be excited by this. He can write so many stories for Stanley to follow with this many choices to make. But no, he's disappointed. This is too much freedom for the player to have, and it only serves to muddy up the story that the narrator intended to tell. I'll say it, this is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise you, there definitely was a story here before. Do we just... do we need to restart the game again? Well, I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again, but it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot, why not? When I see this, I start to think of other games that offer too much freedom for their own good and I'm reminded of the first Bioshock. Don't get me wrong, it's one of my favorite games of all time, but the choice between harvesting and saving the Little Sisters is a bridge too far in my eyes, at least narratively. I won't spoil the endings to that game, but I will say that one ending feels like a totally natural conclusion to the game's story, while the other feels incredibly forced and completely unlikely. For a game whose entire meta-commentary is about the lack of free will the players have in games, no matter how free they might feel, the one example of a branching narrative in the game seems entirely out of place. So this leads me to the question that was being asked throughout the development of Bioshock, Fallout, Grand Theft Auto, and nearly every other game, particularly the Stanley Parable. How much free will should the player have in our game? Obviously different games will have a different answer, but there's a huge frustration behind answering this question. For every inch you give the players, they'll take a mile. Half-Life 2 has an incredibly strong narrative, and outside of that, one of the best aspects of the game is how freely Valve lets players use the assets from it. It's a game that lays itself bare to anyone who's interested, and as a result, we know about G-Man saying, Well, shit. We know that this device doesn't actually do anything, no matter how much you mess with it, and we've gotten so used to messing with these characters in Gary's Mod and other community creations that they're no longer horrifying in the slightest in spite of their once terrifying visual design. Because Valve gave the players so much freedom, we all experienced, to some degree, Hunt Down the Freeman, a fan-made game that totally undermines the mystique of the Seven Hour War, G-Man, the Combine, and a ton of other great elements of the Half-Life story. The lesson to take from this is that freedom can often undermine a game's story. For a contrary example, look at Metal Gear Solid 3, a game that has practically zero mods, and as a result still has some secrets to be discovered. While the Metal Gear Solid series intentionally undermines its own story constantly, it'll always be perceived exactly how it was intended, while the experience of playing something like Half-Life 2 or Halo or Postal 2 totally shifts as the games age, simply because those games encourage players to mess with them, either in-game as in Halo or out-of-game as in Half-Life. Like I said, you give players an inch, they take a mile. Dishonored 1 wasn't meant to be played without any powers. There are two points in the game where you absolutely have to use them, and the rest of the game is far easier if you do. But because that game gives you so much freedom, people like me have warped the way we perceive the game by attempting to play through it that way. So again, finding out how much freedom to give players must be an incredibly frustrating part of the game design process. They'll always want more freedom than you give them, but every bit of freedom leads to further undermining of the narrative you want to tell, and the statement you want to make. This frustration is what drives every inch of the Stanley Parable, and it's the reason the game occasionally just concedes and lays itself bare to the players. So what happens when we come to that room, and get to choose between almost a dozen different paths? Well, the narrator quickly gets bored, and the story quickly gets boring. The narrator wants to have an exciting story, but all of this player freedom only serves to hurt the pacing of that story. Metaphorically, the game designer tried out a design where the player had a ton of freedom, and it just hurt the story, 
so we restart the game and try a new design. This time, the player has no choice at all, and the story loses all meaning because it doesn't connect us to it through the illusion of choice. Would well, you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? You win! Yeah! Congratulations! I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off, so good job. Oh no, no, I don't feel right about this at all. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Okay, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. That one clearly doesn't work either, so we restart again, and the narrator introduces the Stanley Parable Adventure line. With this, we're forced to move about an exact, rigid structure for the story, but again, it doesn't connect us to the story at all. This reminds me of the optional objective compass in Bioshock. It tells you exactly where to go and exactly what to look at, and it makes the game feel incredibly forced and takes so much of the soul out of playing it. The narrator might be excited by the line, but it quickly becomes apparent that the player isn't engaged by its strictly linear story whatsoever. So by this point, we've tried three different designs, each one with a different amount of player freedom, and each one failed. So what's the perfect balance? Two choices? Four? You can just sit there in your room writing totally abstract poetry that has no meaning whatsoever to anyone other than yourself, ultimately getting no recognition and getting nowhere philosophically. Or you can water down what you want to do in order to make it something that other people will want to engage with. I can't think of any better example of pure frustration. Now let's focus on the opposite side of that coin, the players. While the entire confusion ending has been a picture of linear and non-linear game design, the next section of it is purely freestyled, not even the narrator knows where we're going with this, and every hallway we walk down just gets more and more boring and empty until eventually we find a room where we actually have a choice to make, both paths leading to a whole world of possibilities. The narrator eventually forces us to take the right door, and we find a big room with a projector, and we learn that both paths led here all along. Projected on the wall is the entirety of the confusion ending laid out for us in perfect writing. While we may have made one or two choices along the way, none of them ultimately mattered. The player felt like they had escaped the Stanley Parable, and the narrator felt the same, but then we see this harsh reminder that everything we've seen so far was planned in advance, cold and calculated. The narrator is just as crushed by this as we are. It's all... determined? So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this... this... thing... wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really... The ending to the confusion ending seems to represent the narrator finally realizing just how fun non-linearity and player freedom is, whereas he's so prudish about the player breaking away from his story and most of the other endings. By resigning and giving the player some freedom, he's liberated himself from worrying so much about his story and his artistic message, but ultimately it led to this realization, that no matter how much freedom you give the player to make their own path, you're still the one making the paths. The illusion of choice is all you can ever give a player. All roads lead to the realization that their experience was planned ahead of time. The narrator and Stanley only want to destroy each other, Stanley with his annoying free will and the narrator with his annoying storytelling, but the two also need each other. If you write poetry for only yourself, nobody else will want to read it, and you'll never progress. But if you write poetry for someone else, you'll just be worried that they aren't picking up on the subtleties of your message. There is no escaping the Stanley Parable, whether you're the game designer or the player. No matter what game you're talking about, and no matter how much freedom it offers you, you're always going to be walking through someone else's halls, and some annoying stranger is always going to be walking through yours. <laughs> There once was a man named Stanley, who people considered so manly. But the truth must be told, he was not very old, and was quite particularly gangly. What Stanley liked most was buttons. He pushed them like some kind of glutton. He did it all day in a meaningful way but his brain had long ceased to function. Which is why he is in this parable, and lives an existence quite terrible. And if you are not strong, and keep playing along, you too will become quite unbearable. Yes. You too 
will become quite unbearable. 